In this video, I will be sharing with you on the debunking misconceptions and overcoming social anxiety. So do you struggle to interact with others? Or do you find the feeling of embarrassment to be quite overwhelming? Many individuals are unaware of social anxiety because it's so frequently misunderstood. People typically assume that those who experience anxiety simply just don't like to socialize and label them as shy person. So shyness and social anxiety are very, very separate conditions and we all really need to understand this. Social anxiety is a mental illness. That's right. Again, social anxiety is a mental illness, whereas shyness is a personality trait. So there is a big difference. Being shy does not necessarily indicate that you struggle with social anxiety. It's most common for people to feel a little timid in unfamiliar situations, like, like most of us, right? We do feel si kind of timid in different situations uh, if it's the first time that we're experiencing. But social anxiety is unfortunately far, far more complicated than just simply being shy in a situation. So here's some facts here. Did you know that approximately 22 million Americans, 22 million Americans or 7% of the population actually suffer from social anxiety disorder. 22 million people is a lot. Now, I know 7% might be small, but if you think about the millions of people going and, and, and having this kind of social anxiety as an illness, that's a lot of people. So even if you do not have social anxiety, there is a good chance that even a friend or family or a coworker does have social anxiety disorder. And if you do experience social anxiety, know that you are not alone. Before I go more into this, uh, something that's called social anxiety disorder, I want to encourage you to please watch until the end so that I can explain to you and share with you some of the strategies and recommendations in terms of how to overcome social, social anxiety. So please watch until the end. So what exactly is social anxiety? Let's go a little bit deeper into that. Social anxiety disorder, also refer, refer, referred to as social phobia, is characterized by anxiety or fear in social situations. So this disorder makes it difficult for a person to engage in conversations, meeting new people, and participating in social occasions. So people worry that they'll be watched or judged by others. These scenarios can make you feel anxious just by thinking about them or lead you to overthink every situation that ends up spoiling your everyday life. Social anxiety lasts longer than just a single occurrence. If you notice, social anxiety is far different than being just simply shy. Social anxiety is never a choice. People with social anxiety don't choose to have it and they can't decide to get rid of it on their own through simple decisions any more than you can tell someone with this with being sick just just get better or to just get over it that's not possible most individuals who suffer from social anxiety are aware that their anxieties are irrational yet they are unable to control them without a doctor's assistance People who struggle with social anxiety disorder often spend a lot of time in private contemplating their interactions with others, both during and after they occur. For instance, individuals could experience intense anxiety for weeks ahead of giving a crucial presentation at work, imagining all the terrible things that could possibly go wrong. 
Similar to this, following a trigger event, people could repeatedly replay conversations in their heads over and over and over and over again, analyzing their mistakes or failed attempts to fit in and communicate. They sometimes exaggerate their character flaws and inflict negative critiques on themselves during these never-ending ruminations. So after those situations, it just keeps replaying over and over in their brain. The crippling effects of social anxiety are often misinterpreted. Despite their constant desire to make friends and participate in social activities, people with social anxiety may find it difficult to do so because of their intense, uncontrollable worries. So on the outside, they can come across as calm and reserved, restrained, maybe a little nervous, distant, or uninterested. Additionally, they could exhibit observable signs of distress, such as blushing and shivering, perspiration, and trouble meeting other people's eyes, like looking at their eyes face to face. So these symptoms can be misinterpreted negatively by others who may not be aware of this disorder, further isolating the socially anxious person. Fortunately, there are a variety of strategies of overcoming anxiety, or at the very least support for creating healthier coping mechanisms. Before I go further, I would love to see if you could uh, subscribe and also like and comment below on if you actually go have a social anxiety disorder or if you are shy. So what are you? And tell, definitely would love to hear about some of your comments below. But please continue to watch till the end and you subscribing to this channel is greatly appreciated. So most often, those who suffer from anxiety go through therapy to receive medical treatment. So he, continuing on with some of these um, options for you. Therapy has a few advantages. The main benefit is that your therapist can listen to your thoughts and feelings and work with you to identify the underlying causes of your social anxiety. It is a stable place where you can discuss your anxieties and develop a strategy to deal with them. There are also medications that could be prescribed to you, so those are a couple options. Another option is something called teletherapy, which is also a great choice. Similar to therapy, but done at home through video conferences. So teletherapy can make patients feel more at ease and willing to communicate their issues, which can help develop that trust more quickly. Additionally, since patients can be by themselves in their homes or other private spaces, there's a better level of privacy and confidentiality. If professional help is not for you, you can always join support groups. A local or online support group for social anxiety could be something you want to participate in. Here, you can interact with people who have the same condition as you and can relate to what you're going through. You can share your experiences, pick up coping mechanisms from other group members, and possibly even role play in a support group. Speaking in front of a group and sharing your anxieties is also a great way to practice relating to others in social situations. If your social anxiety isn't too bad, you can try to uh, alternative techniques instead of more conventional ones to lessen your anxiety while you're with people. So changes to one's way of life may also reduce anxiety in general. So your ability to function in social situations may improve if you lower your anxiety level. So one change you can make is to start what? Exercising regularly. Knowing your limitations can also help you to feel less anxious. Too much on your plate can make you anxious worse, so getting comfortable with declining invitations to functions you don't really want to go to and make an effort to give you some rest, relaxation, and self-care is a high priority for, that you should consider. We would like to make it clear that this video was produced solely for educational and entertainment purposes and was not meant to replace a professional diagnosis. I thank you so much for watching this video. Again, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.